please join with me in the call to worship. Happy are those who never follow the advice of the wicked, or loiter on the way sinners take, or sit around with scoffers. Let's find delight in the way of God and meditate on God's word day and night. I want to be like a tree planted by the water, deep, rooted, fruitful, and vibrant. and peace to you and thank you for taking part in worship with First Christian Church of Richmond. I'm Philip Miller, the interim pastor here. We list the names of those who stand in need of prayer due to illness, bereavement, or other problems. And today I would list the names of Laura, Norma, and Aaron as individuals who have been dealing with illness. Of course, we also mourn with other citizens of our country, the 400,000 and plus people who have died from the coronavirus this year. And I invite you to be mindful of others who need your prayers. I might just remind our members also that uh, we have a health and safety assessment team that monitors the situation with the pandemic and they would remind us to wear our masks, wash our hands and wait uh, to keep our six foot distance between one another. Also, I would say wait until it's really safe to try to resume uh, activities that you just forget that you had to postpone during this time of quarantine because there is another strain of the virus. It's not more serious as far as the illness, but it's more contagious. So let's all be mindful of not only our own safety, but one another's. Uh, as a church, we want to protect everybody so that we'll all be able to return to in-person gatherings when it is safe to do so. We are disciplined disciples, a rational and caring people. Now let us turn toward God, toward the Holy One, as we pray. We come to you, Lord, scattered in our separate places, yet like children gathered at the feet of Jesus, bound together in his love. We come just as we are, tossed about with our conflicts and doubts, frustrated by our weakness, yet trusting you to use our weakness to magnify your strength. Breathe your will into our wants and wishes, we pray. Thank you for our daily bread, more than enough to live, enough to give. 
Thank you for the health of those who are healthy. We pray for healthcare workers and for patients at home, in nursing homes and rehab centers, and in hospitals. Give us all patience as we move into a time when some receive vaccinations to protect against the coronavirus, while others wait without knowing when their turn will come. We thank you for shelter from the cold of winter and for resources to provide shelter for others. Thank you for opportunities to serve, for your summons to do your errands, to share your love. Thank you for mountaintop moments when we catch a vision of your realm and keep us mindful of your presence when we go down into the slopes and valleys of human need. Eternal Spirit, ever more creating, bless all our endeavors to be faithful disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, for we pray in his name. Amen. The scripture lesson today comes from Psalm number one. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners 
in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now, I would ask you a favor. Please remind me if we are gathered back together here for in-person worship and we plan the service and decide what the invitation hymn will be when we ask someone to come forward to make a confession of faith or to unite with this church, that I do not choose the hymn which is today's theme, I Shall Not Be Moved. Actually, I wonder, did you sing this song when you were growing up? Did you sing it at church camp? I don't remember ever singing it, but here it is, number 614 in Chalice Hymnal. And I've learned it that way and have enjoyed singing it since. It's a really catchy tune, one of those catchy tunes that worms its way into your brain and kind of stays there. If it weren't for the words, it could get tiring, but we're going to ponder the words of it today. All you have to do to sing this, to pray it, to meditate on it, to chant it, to make it your mantra, is to acknowledge, honestly, I hope, that sometimes you have a cross to bear. We all have a cross to bear, right? Well, I'll tell you what, I hesitate to say yes to that. I think it's presuming a little too much to say that my personal struggles can be compared to the cross where Jesus died. Nevertheless, I hope I can say that if I ever really do have a cross to bear, I will pray that I shall not be moved. The second verse gives me no such problem. It says, when my burden's heavy, I shall not be moved. Now, heavy burdens I can relate to. I've had heavy burdens, and I think all you have to do to sing this song and pray it and say it and keep it in your heart is to acknowledge with integrity, I pray, that sometimes you carry a heavy burden. Now, you get to decide what your burden is. Uh, goodness, what kind of problem would it be? A uh, physical health problem? Mental health issue? A family conflict? Financial strain? Feeling overworked? Or perhaps the burden you carry is a burden for a cause you believe in, a burden for someone else. It might be the burden of someone who feels like they're caring for someone they love 26 hours a day, eight days a week. We all have a burden to bear, and there's no end to the list of possible burdens. When your burden is heavy, when my burden's heavy, I shall not be moved. And the third verse says, sometime, sometime or other, one or more of your friends may forsake you. On Facebook, during this polarized era we've been living through, people unfriend one another. Now that can sting if someone you have trusted, someone whose friendship you've cherished for many years, suddenly decides to unfriend you because your opinions on something disagree. That stings, but it's a lot worse. The pain is deeper if it happens in real life. Whew. Someone you've counted on to have your back now turns their back. Someone you have depended upon to stand up for you now has stood you up. 
A woman tells me that she was married for 10 years until her husband had an affair. Betrayal. Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. All of the disciples forsook Jesus. In fact, Jesus even prayed from Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When my friends forsake me, I shall not be moved. Now that is really a statement. These statements in this song are relevant. The song assumes we can connect with the experience of maybe not cross-bearing, or perhaps so, but certainly of burden-bearing and of the feeling of being forsaken by our friends. Is that a downer song? Is that singing the blues? But wait, there's more. The chorus says, like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. What's that about? Well, it's a quotation from Psalm number one. As we read earlier, those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the seat of scoffers uh, or follow the path of sinners whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditate on God's law day and night are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper like trees planted by the water. They do not wither, but bear fruit. We find the same poem essentially in the 17th chapter of the prophet Jeremiah, who says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when the heat comes and its leaves shall stay green in the year of drought. It is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. You see, this spiritual, I shall not be moved, is a devotional any of us can adopt individually, personally, privately for our devotional life. It's a wonderful meditation to keep. But you know, this is an African-American spiritual, an African-American spiritual, and its development follows the periods of American history, which began, of course, with slavery. Slavery was here before there was a United States of America. And so for 265 years, this song had the opportunity to grow and develop among a population of slaves. But then later when the abolitionists came and the Underground Railroad was passing through North Carolina and, and into places like Kentucky and Indiana up above the Mason-Dixon line, people could sing, when my friends forsake me, I shall not be moved. And then in the Gilded Age, when there was a growing gap between the rich and the poor, people sang, I shall not be moved, as they demonstrated against the industrialists who were widening that gap. And later, in the 1920s, when labor unions were growing and unionization was taking place to counteract the Great Depression, people sang, I shall not be moved. 
on into the civil rights era of the 1950s and 1960s, the song encouraged people as they sang, I shall not be moved. It was even sung in Swedish uh, anti-nuclear demonstrations in the late 1970s. The world has adopted and adapted this song to many causes of justice through the years. And all of these movements found leadership and allies and inspiration and encouragement and strength in churches among Christians, where the songs we call spirituals united and motivated protesters, demonstrators, advocates for justice, whether they were Christian or Jewish or secular, the people joined together in the spirit of these songs. If I had edited Chalice Hymnal, I would have been inclined to change the I to we. We shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. For we are a movement. Yes, we shall move. We shall move forward. We shall move forward toward harmony, toward justice. We shall move forward toward peace. When we proclaim our identity as a church, our identity, we declare we are disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. We are disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. Yes, we are a movement, a forward movement, and we shall not be moved backward to the unsatisfactory status quo. Let's live by the words from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 39. But we are not among those who shrink back and so are lost, but are among those who have faith and so are saved. We shall not be moved one step back. We shall not be moved one step back. Sing this catchy song to pray for courage and perseverance and to grow in faith and to do the right thing as a person and as a church, regardless of what it costs us. But please, don't use it to justify stubbornness in refusing to change the things that ought to be changed. Let's pray. Lord God, remind us today to meditate on your way and to find our joy in trusting your guidance. Whether we personally have burdens to bear or find ourselves able to help others carry their burdens, may we do so without shrinking back. Let your way and your guidance be the channel of living water that keeps us healthy and makes us fruitful with the fruit of your spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen.
years ago. You may remember the words which contemplate life's purpose and meaning. I close my eyes only for a moment, and the moment's gone. All my dreams pass before my eyes, a curiosity, dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Our scripture reading from Psalm 1 said that those who are sinners are like dust in the wind, like chaff which the wind drives away. One verse of the song says, Now don't hang on. Nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky. It all slips away. All your money won't another minute buy. The things we hoard and crave never really satisfy us. And so Jesus says, lay up not for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so, when we do that, we become like trees planted by the water. We come now to the table and make our offerings. We come where Christ invites us. We come to the source of living water. We come to the bread which satisfies. We come to the true vine. We come to be reconciled to our neighbor, to bring our offerings, and to receive the offering of God. As we come to this table, remember, we remember the night when Jesus was betrayed, how he gathered the disciples at the table and took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, likewise, the cup, having given thanks, he said, drink of this, all of you, for this is the new covenant of God's love given in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. As we come to this table, we remember Christ by making Christ a part of us so that it is no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. Our elders will now lead us in prayer. God of Moses, when the Hebrews were thirsting in the wilderness, you had your servants strike a rock and waters gushed forth. God of Elijah, on Mount Carmel, you broke a drought and demonstrated your power to a faithless people. God of Jesus Christ, when our spirits longed for you as a deer in the wilderness pants for a flowing stream, 
you offered us living water. As we drink the cup, we are refreshed and blessed by Jesus Christ. We thank you, God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we gather the congregation to praise you, to give you thanks, and to receive your blessing. As you have provided food for our tables, you provide us with the spiritual food, this bread that we break now, to signify our covenant with Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, you have sent us redemption. Let his praise endure forever. Amen. on the foundation of your most holy faith as the Holy Spirit helps you to pray. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>